each of you boys and girls. Guess what? Your day is getting better. And you know why? Because you chose to spend the next 20 minutes getting to know how God wants to bring you joy from His Word, the Bible. You will have an awesome time singing songs, talking to God, watching the cartoon story, and hearing directly what Jesus has to say to you. Welcome! It's Kids Church, and it's just for you. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. You want to be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, space, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, space, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, space, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. You want to be a grape? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Today I'm going to be reading Genesis chapter 15, verse 4 through 6. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own. Flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If needed, you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited him as righteous. Stories of the Bible Noah. This is Noah. Noah is in the Hall of Fame because he listened to God. God created the whole universe. He created the sun and moon and stars, the sky above and the sea below. God created the animals and the people. Over time, the people on earth began to do bad things because they didn't listen to God. There was only one man in all the earth who was different because he listened to God. That man was Noah. So God told Noah to build an ark. He told Noah exactly how to build the ark, and it was to be the biggest boat ever built. God told Noah to build an ark for his family and the animals to live on during the flood. When the ark was ready, God told Noah to load everyone into the large boat. They entered in pairs, each with another of its kind. After seven days, it started to rain. The underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and then stopped. 
Many days later, Noah sent out a dove to find dry land, but the dove came back. After seven days, Noah sent out the dove again, and it returned with a branch. After seven more days, Noah released the dove again. This time, it did not return. This made Noah think the dove found dry land where it could rest. Noah lifted the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Noah trusted in God's plan and God protected his family during the flood. Now, the flood had come and gone, and Noah, his family, and all of the animals walked on land again. Noah built an altar and sacrificed burnt offerings to the Lord. God was pleased with Noah's sacrifice and made a promise to Noah that he would never again destroy the earth and every living thing with a flood. God put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah and all mankind of this promise. Please bow your heads and close your eyes in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for another day. We are glad you are our God and we thank you for providing for us. Lord, we ask that you bless everyone with health and wisdom. Please bless my church, friends, and for my family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome back to another round of Kids Church. Pastor Nate here, and I'm glad to see you. School's out, a lot of free time on your hands, and it's time that we can spend in God's Word. So let's get back into our series on faith. We're in Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read the first couple verses that we've already gone over, and then look at some new material about our friend Noah. So chapter 11 in Hebrews verse 1, faith means being sure of the things we hope for, and faith means knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. People who lived in the past became famous because of faith. It is by faith that we understand that the whole world was made by God's command. And this means that what we see was made by something that cannot be seen. Let's jump to verse 7 and listen about Noah. It was by faith Noah heard God's warnings about the things that he could not yet see. He obeyed God and built a large boat to save his family. By his Faith, Noah showed that the world was wrong, and he became one of those who are made right with God through faith. Lord, we thank you for your word, your Holy Spirit, and your presence, God. And we just ask that you be here with us today and help us to better understand you and faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, gang, so here we are talking about a man named Noah. Who here? Show of hands, who here has no learned about Noah in the past? Maybe from Sunday school or in church or maybe granny or, or grandpa taught you about him. But Noah was a righteous man. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 that Noah was the only righteous man left. And that God had decided that the evil of man was so bad that he needed to wipe out man 
and all the life on earth and start fresh and start anew. But God saw that Noah was a righteous man and he told Noah that I'm going to send a great rain to cleanse the earth and destroy everything, Noah. But since you're righteous, I'm going to keep you and your family. So God instructed Noah to build an ark. Do you know what an ark is? It's a very, very large boat. And God gave Noah very specific instructions on how long this boat was to be, how wide it was supposed to be, even what stuff he was supposed to take on there with him. Do you know what Noah was supposed to take with him? If you said two of each animal, you're right. God told Noah to take first his family, and then the animals of the world, two of each, so that when the flood was over, the animals could reproduce and start again and be fruitful and multiply as God had intended originally. So Noah gets this instruction from God and he sets out to making this boat and people are looking at Noah like he's crazy. To this point, we don't know if it had ever even rained before. So when they ask Noah, why are you building this great big boat, Noah? And he says, because God said it's going to rain. They looked at him like, what's rain? What do you mean there's going to be a flood? They didn't even register with the people. They didn't understand. But Noah heard from God. Noah had faith. He trusted and believed in what the Lord had told him. And he knew that if he believed in what the Lord said to him, that he would be saved. And we see at the end of our passage for the day, it says, And Noah became one of those who were made right with God through faith, as the whole world was being destroyed by a mighty flood. He was safe inside of this ark of safety because God saw his righteousness and his faith. Noah believed in God. Noah trusted in God. So God saved Noah. Doesn't that sound familiar? When we think about John 3, 16, you ought to know it by now. We've been talking about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that means have faith, shall not perish but have eternal life. If we believe in Jesus, God, the Son, God in the flesh, then we know we will be saved, just like Noah, because Noah had faith. And if you haven't had that chance to, to experience that safety that comes with having faith in God, that comfort in knowing what your future is going to look like, then we invite you. You can, can type something right now in the comments down below. Join us for a Sunday service. We do children's groups on Saturday from 2 to 4 on 2nd and 4th Saturdays. Call the church. Talk to one of our connection counselors. We would love to hear from you. God loves the little people. The Bible says that through the mouths of, of children and babes have you called forth your praise, Lord. So we invite you now to make contact with us. Join the Mount Moriah family. Join the faith community. We love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the guidance that you have given us, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and our ability to be saved through faith in him, God. And I just ask you to touch everyone who's listening to this message, God, that if they haven't had faith before, they may come asking, what must I do to be saved, Lord? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Love you guys. See you next week. Jesus is so good. I hope you love him too, just like I do. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.